Um, well, I'd like to suggest two taglines for Asian cities in the future, two competing taglines, if I may. Um, the first uh, would be around seeing Asian cities as locations of diversity, uh, not, ter- not just in terms of uh, diversity in size, uh, ranging from the, the Asian megacities like Tokyo, Guangzhou, Mumbai, down to clusters of a few thousand households. Uh, but also uh, an uh, almost extreme diversity in terms of institutional capacities of cities, um, with some Asian cities being leaders in global thought and practice uh, in terms of, for example, urban planning, urban design, with others uh, lagging far behind, really. Um, and uh, But also diversity in terms of uh, historical trajectories, um, which are very rich and very diverse, um, or varying in diverse growth patterns. Um, and this diversity is set to flourish even further uh, in the near future. And a, a second uh, tagline would be around uh, vibrancy and informality. Now, I see uh, Asian cities uh, as not just as the socioeconomic powerhouses that they are, uh, but recognize that they are in this position uh, largely because of vast uh, degrees of informality in terms of informal living, informal work, informal schooling, informal service provision. And so this tagline in the future will be shaped in earnest uh, by how Asia um, provides for its informal sectors that have been uh, keeping uh, the, its cities ticking through sustainable uh, but also equitable governance. Oh, I think the tagline for Asian cities is clear from a meeting like this, child-friendly. And uh, it's a very meaningful phrase. Uh, UNICEF has long supported child-friendly schools. I've seen for myself in Nepal a child-friendly school that was infinitely more friendly than I remember my own school in Hove when I first went, when my knees were knocking the first day. And uh, in the case of Nepal, They had uh, songs from the older classes. They gave every child a pencil and a school book and uh, and so forth. It's possible to make child-friendly cities and uh, in all sorts of ways. And you just need to go all through all the areas. Are there places where the children can play? If not, why not build them and so forth? Uh, Are the schools child-friendly? Are the health clinics child-friendly? And, and, and. And uh, so child-friendly cities could be an inspiring slogan that actually led to practical action. Well, the checkline for Asian cities, I think it's really important to um, go for a holistic approach. So not only top, uh, top down uh, planning, I'm an urban planner myself, uh, or bottom up community work, but bringing these two fields together, that would be really important. Well, I think in answering that question, uh, two important population dynamics need to be taken into consideration. Uh, The first being urbanization. As we know, uh, Asia is the most rapidly urbanizing continent. Um, And the second is the youth bulge, referring referring to the large proportion of youth and children within the population. So when looking at these dynamics, this means that future decisions about um, cities need to fundamentally take into consideration the needs of children. So uh, in some, I would say that uh, the tagline for Asian cities would be simply child-friendly. I think the tagline for Asian cities of the future should be cities that are ready for the children of today and tomorrow because urbanization is increasing year on year. At the moment there's about 30 million children that grow up in cities in Pakistan and that figure is increasing by about 3% each year. So that means that cities, both small, medium and large sized cities, need to be able to respond to the needs of the children that live there now and also the children that will be living there in the years to come what i'd like it to be is asian cities should be public cities uh and because i think that public cities are good cities for all people and in that case they could be inclusive and include all of the requirements that we need for a good livable and sustainable city ah finding a tagline for uh asian city in the future i hope would be that are 
cities for children where children actually can live properly. And uh, I know this sounds a little cheesy when we talk about child-friendly city, but I hope that there are cities designed around the children. And what we discussed in this stage is that if you design a, a city around a child, actually it will be a good city for everybody. We mentioned yesterday uh, the fact that you, you, when you go around with a small child in a, in a trolley, and that you experience the same problems that a wheelchair will experience. When you have to give uh, health to a child, we experience the same problem that elders will have in finding good uh, good medicines. Or when you just need a public space to have your child to, to play, it will be a nice space where you can go and read a book and play and stay with your friends, mm. and etc. So I know this sounds a lot of UNICEF, but actually it, it works. I hope that Asian city will be cities designed around children. It, UNICEF has long been concerned with children in urban areas, of course, mostly children in poorer areas, slum areas, and so forth, beginning in 1960s. But the key points that have always uh, dominated UNICEF's approach, participation, management in which women or other people locally are in charge, working with mayors. Mayors are very important and often uh, those of us who think of must get and influence the government fail to realize that often, it, often it's mayors that are in charge of the budgets of, for health, for schools, for all sorts of urban infrastructure urban, water, sanitation and so forth, all these things are best handled at local level and in a participatory way. And UNICEF has been doing that for now 50, 60 years and has got a lot of experience to build on, positive experience as well as, of course, tackling real problems. Well, ch friendly design, well, um, I'm really thinking about public space. I think public space is the key word in, uh, in design because public space brings people together and it offers opportunities uh, for children to come together uh, for social activities. So uh, the private space is, well, only just a little. So everything needs to happen outside. So public space would be a really important keyword in that. So simply put, um, child-centered disaster risk management um, is a practice uh, that puts the needs and priorities of, of children at its core, um, with a particular focus on the poorest and most vulnerable children in urban areas. And in terms of how cities uh, in Asia can, can use this effectively, it requires a recognition that um, you know, whilst uh, urban children are typically better off than the rural counterparts, this is not to hold true for the uh, for those living in urban poverty. So, recognizing that those who live in urban poverty typically s suffer from um, inequalities and also exclusion, uh, this must necessarily uh, address the kind of dynamic drivers of vulnerability. And this really goes back to the lack of access to basic infrastructure and, and services, but also the institutions that are responsible for providing them. So what this all really hinges on, hinges on is our more accountable local uh, governance structures and how also child, uh, children's needs and priorities are considered within them. I would like um, cities of the future to be I think more tolerant spaces and if the human rights and child rights agenda can create cities which are more tolerant again of all people's needs including children then I think that would be good for children so children in the uh, cities of the future will be good for children uh, if they're open cities if they're fair cities uh, and if they respect across age barriers um, from education to small urban spaces to the environment and obviously um, in my particular concern would be cities which work against uh, proliferation of violence and towards sort of social justice. I think that a major challenge of implementing programs that are responsive to the needs of urban children is a lack of data. Uh, aggregated statistics can actually hide disparities 
And so there's a real need for data that shows intra-urban situation of children, particularly those of chil- that of children living in lower income areas. Uh, secondly, the situation in urban areas is changing very rapidly with rapid urbanization, um, migration, economic migration, internal displacement, refugees. And so therefore we need to work to develop new and innovative ways of collecting data. And some of this could be through developing participatory techniques of uh, finding out what the situation is on the ground in urban settings. Um, And this means that with um, better, more up-to-date information within um, difficult urban settings, this will help uh, make programs more responsive to the needs of the children that live there. Uh, I think that we cannot ignore that the majority of children and the majority of poor children in 20 years will live in cities. So as as the mandate of UNICEF is for all children, and particularly the most vulnerable one, we will have to do something for them. Now there is the fear that that will imply moving resources from rural area to urban area, but I don't think it's the case. I think that in cities, most of the cities do have the capacity and the resources. And what we, we don't have is the access to those resources by all the people that are living there. Now, the fact that uh, in most of the cases, uh, well-being indicators in cities are better than in rural area means on potential, people in the city can be better than in rural area. The real problem is disparities and lack of access. Sometimes you live in a slum and drinking water past 20 meters from your house, but you cannot have access. You you want to, a good school is 500 meters from your slum, but you cannot send your kids over there. It's not about bringing resources. So it's a different way for UNICEF to start thinking more in terms of influencing policies. And we heard during this conference, uh, Sir Richard Jolly also suggesting that sometimes we have to, you know, push with the policymaker, sometimes instead of speaking with the policymaker or the president, speaking with the wife of the president to get things done. But it's about changing the policies, changing the access that uh, the people, the children in a city uh, can have. And at the end, it's a question of rights. Is that every child that comes from a city, it doesn't matter from where the child is coming from, where the child is born, still she or he has the right to have all, all the rights as any other children. So I do believe that cities will be the major opportunity for children in Asia in the future. I'm sure that UNICEF will link with that opportunity and maximize the, that opportunity. What we don't know is that probably we have to change the way we work in cities. It's not bringing big programs or buying vaccines or building schools, but it's more working with the policymakers to change the policy and the practice linked with those policies.